So a while ago, a YouTuber that I am following, uh, I think his name is Quiv, uh, the Lazy Geek. Um, I think it's pronounced Quiv. Um, he lives in Tokyo and he's an astrophotographer or in the channel he's doing astrophotography. And he asked for some processing help. Um, I, and I got a bit curious about uh, that because he's uh, worked on the exact same project that I am working on, namely the Rosette Nebula in HSO, uh, meaning hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen. So uh, this was a perfect opportunity for me to do some practice on the same data that uh, I will probably have when I'm finished with my project. I haven't had enough starry nights so far, so I don't have, I haven't collected all the data that I need, but he had over 30 hours worth of data. So it was perfect for me to try out his stuff and uh, maybe even uh, show uh, my results to him. Well, this is the video. So let's create a small, a video about my post-processing, creating an SHO image, meaning sulfur will be in the red, hydrogen will be in the green, and oxygen will be in the blue. So, okay, let's, I got Photoshop here. I have his three files downloaded and let's get started. What we have here is the HA image and this is straight out of uh, the download. Looks basically like this. And what I firstly did was I did the, the initial stretch here to bring out the data. Uh, and I'm working solely in Photoshop because that's uh, my preferred uh, tool. So when I do the stretch, I just create a bunch of uh, small incremental levels that I just uh, add up and then just group together. Uh, after that, I just wanted to increase the contrast a little bit, so I created a curves layer or curves adjustment layer and just created a slight S curve here to increase the contrast and the brightness. Uh, after that, I did another small stretch here. Um, oops, sorry, there we are, just a small stretch. And then the big difference here is that I I create a new layer based on these uh, 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 adjustments, uh, which is this one. And uh, I make this a color dodge layer. Uh, this, as you can see, this will make the entire nebula pop a little bit. The details will show better and uh, it's getting brighter without affecting the sky too much as you can see here. Um, and as you also can see, I have decreased the opacity and the fill because the effect is way too strong if I don't do that and I don't want that strong of effect. And then in the end, I just increased the contrast a little bit more with the curves adjustment layer. And I didn't bother with the stars in this image because the stars are in HA and they are really, really small. So when I adjust the stars, I'm doing it in the O3 channel where the stars are the biggest. Uh, and you can see here, this is the O3 and you can see how much bigger the stars are than the uh, HA variant or the sulfur for that matter. So I'm doing basically the same process in O3 S2 and H alpha, and then I create a new image, which is exactly the same uh, size as these three, and I put them in the respective channel. Um, let's have a look, which is here. So you can see this is the H3 data, the hydrogen data. No, I'm sorry, this is the O, the oxygen, the hydrogen and the sulfur. And these three together are creating this 
initial s h o image and this is where i start this is my starting point for working on this image so first what i did was uh, i did some small stretch uh, not much just a subtle stretch to bring out a little bit more details and darken out the sky and increase the contrast quite a bit here with a curves adjusted layer and then i simply create a new layer called checkpoint i usually like to have checkpoints because i don't want to go back and do stuff sometimes when i'm really happy where i am and then i do exactly the same thing as i did with the with the other channels which is i create a copy here and i do that this uh, as a color uh, dodge layer and now now uh, you can see this is normal but this is just a checkpoint so i cheated a little bit but you can see the effect here that this copy or this layer does and then i'm doing some selective color um, and as you you can see here this is just to bring out the Hubble palette a little bit more. And for some reason uh, that is unknown to me, the Photoshop is bugging out here and I can't show you exactly what kind of things I am doing here. But basically what I'm doing is that I'm bringing up the yellows a little bit more, um, making them a little bit tad more orange, and then I'm just working on the cyan. Uh, basically just to create a little bit more contrast between the images and make it a even better H S uh, oh sorry S H O image and I'm going to go through these steps in more detail in another video I just want to, to show the process that I did to create this image based based on Kuwik's data which isn't my data this isn't my image this is just my post process and then I create a checkpoint and uh, I'm also doing a selective color adjustment here which is to address all of these purple stars. So what I'm doing is that I'm just uh, desaturating the purple color and just increase the contrast a little bit more as you can see here which brings me to this image. So, and then I did some more selective coloring just to make the blue a little bit deeper because I like it that way. And then just some brightness and contrast for the sky. I did some color balancing, which was really minor here, not much, just pulled up the blues uh, three, three steps. I don't know what that's called, plus three on that one. And then the final one, because just a preferred choice, I just made a slight, slight uh, curse adjustment layer to increase the contrast just a tad. And this is it. This is the final image that I'm pretty happy with. And these are based on uh, Kuiv's data. So again, this is not my image, but uh, my image is a work in progress and it will probably look something like this maybe not as uh, detailed and zoomed in as his is because i'm using a canon 200 millimeter lens on my data which makes this nebula a bit smaller than this but uh, well the, the colors and the post process will probably be the same and yeah i really like this data i mean you can really see the details here of the hydrogen the sulfur and the oxygen and i like the colors could have worked a little bit more on the stars but uh, this is good enough for me i also did some star reduction in the photoshop but again i'm gonna show that the entire process a bit more in detail another time so uh Quiv, if you're watching this i hope you like this and uh, maybe got something out of it I don't know but uh, I really enjoyed doing this video and doing this post process and again it was perfect for me because it's uh, I'm working on exactly the same project 
But yeah, um, that's it for this video. And if you like this content, don't forget to give it a like. And uh, if you want to see more of these things, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, well, comments are always appreciated if you have suggestions or anything that I could do a bit different. I'm really glad to hear about that because I'm still learning a lot. I have done this a few months only. So yeah, that's it for me this time. See ya. Thank you.